Okay, thank you. Uh, so today, I will start. To, uh, I will start talk about uh, perfect affirmative theory and virtual classes. So, uh, but before that, I want to uh, say that there are these two major mistakes. Uh, the first one is very serious. Uh, so, on page three, there is some comments on stabilization, and please just delete the entire paragraph. It's wrong, and I copied from somewhere and without thinking. And apparently, that's a bad idea, so don't do that, OK? <laughs> and also, the 1.2, it's, it's, it's not correct. So you have to take a dive. So think about it. Uh, so yeah, so the gluing morphisms, which we haven't talked about. And, but you have learned it in the, before modular curves, so you, uh, that should be something you can uh, you know and uh, uh, so I have to have the two evaluation on the same point so that's something I forgot to put here in the notation oh by the way the first one I have to thank Andrew Crash for pointing this out to me anyway so uh, the second one also to Melo and Filippo uh, okay so today So uh, the the main reference I'm using for for this is from uh, Graeber Pandari Pandes in Mesonis paper on virtual localization, something like virtual localization. And I choose this above others because uh, it use uh, very few. Uh, use very, very little of the language of stacks. OK, so uh, let me start. So x is uh, an algebraic scheme, or it's a uh, st stack. The Lima for stack. And so the data for the perfect operating theory is there are two things. First is a two turn two-term complex of vector bundles. Over x. So on x, you have a two-term complex of vector bundles. And and then a morphism, I'll, I'll say this. Let me first copy it, and I'll, I'll explain this a little bit. See? A morphism of complexes uh, This two-term complex to something called 
cotangent complex. And this data has to satisfy uh, two properties. Uh, let me, as I said, let me first write down all of them, and then I will explain this. Uh, the morphism phi induces isomorphism in degree zero, and then induces uh, is this a surjection in degree negative one. And so, to make our life easier, I will make assumptions that first there is an embedding so this is a cl closed embedding into one a smooth so scheme or stack so uh, for today you can think of everything as scheme mostly and then the second assumption I'm going to make here is, uh, well, do I need to make a second assumption? I remember I do. OK, so the second assumption I'm going to make here is phi is uh, a morphism of compresses. So I, I wrote all these, but really what I want to say here is, well, first of all, I need two terms. And you will see these two terms. I mean, as, as you probably saw from uh, David's lecture yesterday, that you need sort of, you do need deformation obstruction to be two terms and two terms only, right? So that's, that's these two terms. We'll, we'll learn that a little bit later. Uh, what these two terms should stand for in growing within theory, and then a morphism in the derived category. And I'm going to, so what, what does it mean to be in derived category? I mean, if you know, so and this, uh, so it's a complex, so it's a category of complex of coherent sheaves bounded from above. That means it has to be like E, for example, E, so if you have any complex F, then you have a greater or equal to a certain number bounded from above. Uh, less or equal to, sorry. So it could go to negative infinity, but cannot go to positive infinity. Make sense? And so, and that's what the cotangent complex live in. And in fact, by using this, by using the first assumption, so, and in fact, we only need uh, this two term complex, so we will, this two-term truncation of cotangent complex uh, can be written as uh, this i over i square to, uh, to omega y restricted to x. So I'm going to take this cotangent complex. I'm going to replace the cotangent complex by its two-term truncation. And this is sort of a, a, what's a second fundamental sequence or something in Harshon's book. And omega y stands for uh, the Kähler differential of on y. So that just the f you know, if you're a different geometry, it would be a, uh, uh, the, sh the shift of f uh, differential f uh, first, or first differential forms on y, like dz1, dz2, et cetera. And this will be your conormal sheaf of x in y. I is the ideal shift of x inside y. Is it, are we okay so far? And so 
since uh, now I'm, and, and so what is the, uh, I mean, just the passing comment, because I'm already assume, assuming that a phi is a morphism of complexes. For in the direct category, if you have uh, a morphism, which, which just means that you have, you have to have a roof diagram, which look like this. A morphism in derived category will be like E dot to L dot. If this is in derived category, which means if you can represent it by complex and complex, then you just have some a roof going through this. It might not, this phi might not go directly from E dot to L dot, but you will go via a roof. And this, where this uh, part, maybe I call S, S will be uh, uh, a quasi-isomorphism, which means a quasi-isomorphism just means this is a morphism of complexes which induces isomorphism on the cohomology. So you, you first have, you replace that complex with another complex with exactly the same cohomology groups. Of course, you know how to do this in homological algebra. And then you, uh, then that rep replacement has an honest morphism to L dot. So because I don't want every time to write this roof again, so I'm, I'm making an assumption that the uh, morphism phi is a morphism of complexes by itself. Does that make sense? So we don't lose anything by making the, uh, the second assumption. We do this a lose a little bit uh, by making this first assumption, although in all the uh, application of growth and theory, uh, well, not maybe not all, but most of the application growing in theory, assumption A certainly holds. You can find, you can find uh, uh, smooth uh, close embedding to smooth stacks for any M, G, M bar G and X beta we defined yesterday. All right, so far so good. Okay, so that's uh, that's the setup. And so this is a called perfect ish. Uh, well, just sort of a. It's called perfect uh, because it's it. Well, it should have been called. The full name should have been the two-term perfect Abelian theory. But we we'll just we we'll just uh, we'll just address this uh, by this name. Okay. So uh, that said, Graeber Pandari Ponte they started this by saying, look, uh, let's first. How do I construct a virtual class? If I'm given the two-term perfect Abelian theory, so what you need to do is to uh, look at this diagram and carefully. And so, for example, when when David was talking about this deformation obstruction, you you can see that from uh, this. W w you can try to ponder upon what's uh, deformation obstruction from this diagram. And that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, but I'll, I'll first give you uh, a formal definition of uh, so formal definition of virtual fundamental class or construction. So, so first of all, you you construct a mapping cone. associated to the morphism of complexes. So so we all familiar with mapping cone, right? Or are you okay with mapping cone? So, all right. So anyway, so it's so the mapping cone of that because it's just two terms. So this is a two term and the two terms. So mapping cone will be in three three term sequence. <coughs> going like this. And so, uh, the, so maybe uh, 
Okay, we call mapping call. Is that uh, mapping cone? Uh, so I'll call it cone of phi at uh, so it will be e shift by plus one l and the differentiation on c would be matrix for e goes so d e one zero. So that's mapping cone. So and so in, in any time you have a morphing of complexes, you can form a ma mapping cone. This is shifted by one, and then the differential can be written like this. So this uh, morphing of chain complexes. I think I that's not calculate one. So was that this is a correct. So you can check that against. Uh, well, it depends on what, how you shift that. So my definition of shift, E shift by N of degree M will be E M plus M. So that, I think that's. So minus 2 will give you minus 1, for example. Because shift by 1 will give you minus 1. So that's how it works. OK, so. Uh, Here's an exercise. Prove that uh, this, the two conditions I associate with a perfect Hering theory, which is uh, the morphism of comp chain compresses uh, phi induces isomorphism degree 0 and induces surjection degree minus 1, exactly means that uh, 1 plus 2 exactly means the star is uh, th this complex is uh, exact. It's a source, yes? Uh, when you say induces isomorphism in degree 0, projection in degree minus 1, does that mean on cohomology group? Yes, yes. In cohomology, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I should have said that, yeah, thanks. Certainly, you know, in the homology algebra, you can always, you know, you can always add that, you know, this stupid pieces to that without changing cohomology. What I mean is, if induces uh, isomorphism in cohomology in degree zero and uh, induces uh, subjection in, uh, in degree minus one for in cohomology. So I'm, I'm, see, I'm grading these two term complexes as in uh, degree negative 1 and 0. Okay. Our questions? So that's, that's uh, this is a, a re rephrase of the, the con condition for, uh, for, the perf for a perfect abstraction theory. And so now what we're going to do here is, well, you see, in the left, I did not, I did not impose uh, injectivity. In fact, it will not be injective. And in general, so what I will do here, I will take the kernel and call it Q. All right. So Q is defined just to be a kernel of that. My condition says it's exact on the right, but the left here is not exact. So I'm just so definitely this, uh, define this as uh, set. So, so from this Q, uh, so from this modified, ex now it's short exact sequence, I can form associate exact sequence of cones from uh, 0 to Q 
to E naught plus uh, I over to omega Y to X. I will form uh, associated <coughs> exact sequences of cones which will be due to this which will be ty x then uh, we'll call this e0 that is uh, cone So in fact, this is what call abelian cones. So does everybody know what cone means? I mean, look, really what you have here is uh, once you have, a, say, you have a coherent sheaf over x, then you can take sim. Like this is in Harshon, right? So take sim of that. This is a sheaf of algebra over x, and you take what I mean by cone of this is just take uh, the what Harshon denote by ball face back of the sim. Okay, so that's that's uh, what we say. And this is a beam because it's all always generate. So this whole thing is generated at degree zero. So this remember this sim. This will be like O X F right. Things like this. Yes, yeah, sure. So that thing actually looks like a cone, but I don't see why the mapping cone looks like a cone. Oh, mapping cone is look, mapping cone is something which you have to uh, if you want to see what cone is, you have to go back to topology. What the topologists say about mapping cone. So this is a this is geometric cone, but the mapping cone is really. If you have a, so this comes from topology when you have a, a homo, so you have a continuous map from x to y, and you can cone it in this way. But, yeah, it also looks like a cone. But here, but then we extract the homological algebraic information about the topological construction, that would be a mapping cone. But you know. We can talk about this later. Okay. So, but you know, if it doesn't look like you, you don't find a cone, you, you, yeah. Anyway, so you will. Uh, we can talk about this. Yeah. But anyway, so this is uh, what I mean by a billion cone. Means it just been generated by uh, this. And in general, for example, this is a billion cone, and then you have a cone which, which. Uh, so this, for example. Uh, when it's not when it's called not uh, when it's not called a bi non, uh, not called a billion cone, then it means, for example, you have this uh, normal cone of y inside x. This is not uh, not this same construction, but you have to take spec of this O direct sum r. Uh, sorry, maybe I, I'll just write this. O i n n plus one. N. So this is a usual what called normal cone, and this will be in I think Kai Barron's and Barbara's Fantakis terminology will be called a billion hull of that that cone. So this is a normal usual called normal cone in Fulton's book. And this is uh, uh, well, not just in Fulton's book, but I, m I mean, you can find it in Fulton's book. And this is uh, sort of a, certainly that if th this is all generated in the degree one, so this is generated degree one, and so certainly this map to that. So this. Uh,
and therefore the the corresponding cone so this Well, that's uh, okay. So that's that's sort of an explanation of what I mean by cone, in particular abelian cone. Abelian cone, as I said, is a sim construction, and usually cone you have you can have a, it's a graded algebra, and in in all the cases of this graded algebra, I'm requiring that it's generated in degree one. Okay, so that means you can always find this surjective map it's because it's generated in degree one. So this guy had more relations, while well, this guy relation all, all generated by degree one anyway. So questions? Yes. What I mean I okay, first E, e lower zero, so should that be E upper zero? Yeah, so I, I I'm going to explain this. Okay, so E E this this guy is just defined to be a cone of E zero E upper zero. Okay, but this guy because it's a vector space, so it's basically what. It, so, if you think about this as sort of a, uh, well, I mean, you know, there are two ways to think about vector bundles. One is think about locally free sheaves, and that's how I think about it here. And so this is uh, just the, the cone of the locally free sheaf is what Fulton would call vector bundle. One is locally free sheaf, one is vector bundle. Does that make sense? So this is a, sh sh again, this is a, uh, this is generated freely, locally, and this is just using that free generator to construct a vector space fiber-wise. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. This, this, as I said, this is a function. You can think about this as a function, and this is the space. So it's dual in this way. Right. Think about CM, CN. The dual is just the coordinate x z zero up to, uh, z one up to z n. So I mean, two spaces are dual to each other. And what I haven't explained is exact sequence of cones. What do I mean by exact sequence of cones? This is a little bit complicated. Uh, so exact sequence of cones means that uh, if you have two, so I mean, it's usually, this is a something which usually, uh, so what I, my understanding here is that uh, exact sequence of cones has to come from, uh, in the short exact sequence, it will be cone, cone, and this, this, this guy has to be a vector bundle. So let, let me give you a one definition of exact sequence of cones. So exact sequence of cones, uh, this one is the following. So if I consider uh, two cones, C is uh, this R. Uh, maybe I don't have enough space. I should use upper. So exact sequence of cones has to be come from two cones and one vector bundle. So uh, definition, you first start with two cones, which is uh, this guy's back. S, where S again is a uh, uh, sheaf of uh, OX algebra. And you have another cone, S prime, the same thing. And then we require that again, all these S0 and 
s prime 0 has to be ox, and it's generated in degree 1. This, although this, this requirement might not be needed here, but I impose it uh, everywhere across the board in today's lecture anyway. So an exact sequence of, so uh, a morphism. So I first define a morphism of cones. So if I want to give you a morphism of cones, this has to be given a morphism of cones. Given by uh, has come from the algebra, your uh, sheaf of OX algebras. Of sheaf of graded OX algebra. Yeah, I should say graded. The, the gradient gives you the, uh, the cone structure. This is uh, important, so maybe I create it for example. The gradient gives you uh, the uh, the cone structure because it's all, it gives you a sort of C star action on that, on, the, on your space. OK, so that's it's a whole. Morphism of uh, so a morphism of cone has come from so said we know what the morphism of uh, of sheaf of graded O X algebras and so and because cones are constructed out of that so I define the morphism of cones this way so that's the first thing and then so again if you uh, I want to say this. If you have uh, locally free, then you can then there is uh, this again. This is a vector bundle that said going this way, and then for example, uh, we can think about e zero or omega y restrict to x as locally free sheaves. And then T Y and X will be considered as a vector bundle. Then, so given, if you are given uh, the following things, C to C prime, you have phi. And then, certainly, this is also a cone. But it's just a sort of better kind of cone, right? So you, you can think about this locally free sheaves, and then you can generate that. So by this notation, I mean uh, you take sim of that, become graded OX algebra, and take spec of that. That would be your E, right? So this, be more careful. I have to write like spec sim dot E, et cetera. So but you, know, you understand what I'm saying. If I just write a sheaf without uh, Without being an OX algebra, I mean take a sim, become OX algebra, etc. So this is also a cone. Well, certainly it is a cone. It's just an easier kind of cone. First, the abelian cone, and then secondly, it's actually this generator is actually freely. There's no relations. And so you have these two morphisms. You're given this. So if you're given uh, phi and psi this way, and we call uh, call the sequence exact uh, if first of all, uh, I think the two conditions. First, I know this thing is surjective, so that means on the function level, the dual level has to be injected, right? So that means, 
And in, since I define this from a uh, phi tilde, I will say this phi tilde is injective. Now explain the subjectivity. Okay, questions? So that's that's the first thing. And the second thing here is that uh, because this is injective, that means on the level of functions, it has to be subjective. So again, so this uh, phi tilde from S dot to sim, this is uh, subjective. So that explains this part and that part. Now we have to explain the middle part. So that explains here and here. Now I have to explain what's exact in the middle. So I think here, I mean, lo those who are actually more knowledgeable should correct me. But I think here, the correct definition here is locally on x. OK. So uh, this should be uh, subjective. Uh, subjective. So this should be uh, something like that. I know this is injective to that, so I can consider this a sub sheaf of graded OX algebra. OK. What I'm saying here is that locally, I want this to be exact. Uh, no, no, sorry. Locally to be trivial. There's no extension. The, the uh, short exact sequence, just like we talk about uh, short exact sequence of sheaves, locally, it will be just a uh, direct sum or product in, the, in, in whatever sense you're talking about. And that is the the definition. Uh, it depends on which topology you're using. If you're on X, you're using Tsarisky topology, that will be Tsarisky locally. And if you're in Etal topology, that will be Etal locally, etc. Yeah? Can uh, a sheaf be recovered from its can sheaf be recovered by its cone? Yeah, uh, let's see. Can sheaf be recovered by its cone? I think so. Any objections? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you cl clearly, if, if the sheaf was locally free, then you can just take the sheaf of sections of the cone yes. and then um, dualize it. Yeah. But Yes. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. No, but that would give you the, at least in the locally free sheet, wouldn't that give you the dual of what you want? Mm, no. Well, they are dual to each other anyway. Anyway, the, the, I, I believe that's probably in Harshon's exercise. Like, you know, he has this exercise of ball phase spec, and if you check that, it's all there. OK, so, uh, so to say this uh, more carefully, I, I can say the following. So, so local x, there exists uh, a locally free subsheaf e tilde such that uh, that uh, which maps uh, isomorphically to uh, to E <coughs> such that uh, S dot S prime dot tensor is to be uh, honest I have to say this Toyota which go into it's an isomorphism. So that's basically, I, I just say, what I said here, more, uh, well, I mean, in a more down to earth term. OK. Uh, actually, you know, 
I'm not really the best guy to explain this. I know many people in the audience who are actually more knowledgeable about this subject than myself is. Uh, but anyway, so I was assigned the task. <laughs> so can't complain, right? So. Okay, so that's my definition of an exact sequence of cones. Questions? So once we have exact sequence of cones, then I can, I know what I mean by this sequence is exact. So basically, uh, exact as I said, exact sequence of cones, uh, it's very similar to the dual sheaf has to be exact, except I also need to say that uh, the, so the what, one thing you have to be careful is that E has to be a vector bundle, and locally it has to be trivial. The, the extension has to be trivial locally. Uh, this is a little bit, I think Wharton's <laughs> definition has a, a typo there. I, I, I corrected that. Maybe I, my correction, it could be that Fulton was right, I was wrong. So you should check that. OK, so this is uh, our uh, exact sequence of cones. From this exact sequence of cones, I'm going to define uh, another cone, which then we will use that cone to construct uh, the virtual class. OK, so what is that? OK, so uh, we do have this, uh, so remarks. Since we have uh, e minus 1 subject q, so definitely cone will be injective to e1, <coughs> right? By definition, I choose q to be uh, to factor through that, so that's definitely that. So, uh, and also, I, oh, this one I said already is. So maybe I should reverse this. Subject also means that the cone. So this is defined by that, and this is defined by that. So it's like this. OK, then, OK, so that's two remarks. And then I'm going to define d to be uh, the normal cone of x in y fiber over E zero. And here is uh, a fact slash exercise is that uh, I, I'll explain the terminology in the next board, but I want to write this down in the same board so you can see this. D is uh, called TY cone, or actually it should be TY restrict to X cone. TY cone. I'll explain what TY cone means. And secondly, uh, if you quotient that by TY, this will So I have uh, introduced another name. This is a vector bundle cone. What do I mean by that? Uh, I'll explain this. Okay, but just say there is a. 
something called vector bundle cone. And yeah, so and then you can do a quotient of this cone by this vector bundle, and they will embed into a, this cone of Q. That's the statement. And now I will explain what I mean by a vector bundle cone. So are we good now? So I'm going to lower the board. So what is a ve vector bundle cone? Well, basically, what is a vector bundle anyway? Vector bundle is a vector. It's a it's a family of vector spaces, right? And vector spaces certainly is a abelian group. So I can consider. A, so if I have this, if you think about fiber-wise, and I can think about the cone being acted by a vector space, as an abelian group. So that's that, and that's what we call vector bundle cone. So let me give you a more explanation. So again, the, just the key point is basically because a vector space, you can consider a vector space as a sort of a abelian group, or in this case, abelian group scheme. So let me say this. So if you have definition, if E over X, which is a vector bundle, and you have this C over X, which is a cone, and such that uh, the C is actually a abelian cone. Uh, no, no, C is just a cone. So I, I have to, I will have to write this as S dot. And again, we always assume, as always, S0 is OX. Uh, this is S dot is generated in degree 1, or locally generated degree 1. So uh, and then if you have a morphism of cones, so given a morphism of cones, EQC is a morphism of cones. which I just defined, well, it just means a dual sheaf of OX algebras it, it induce a homomorphism in a dual sheaf of OX algebras. So, and obviously, you can pass this As I just said, called abelian hull. So abelian hull, because this is already generate, this is already defined by uh, sim construction. This is not, but sim construction. As I put uh, on the downboard, that it has a, a map, so you can pass this to. Uh, so the abelian hull of E is still E, but abelian hull of that, which I'll write. A, B. OK, so as I said, this is uh, checked to that. Right, because the sheaf of algebra sim, let me write again, sim is 1, surjects, surject S dot, because it's generated in degree 1. So you have uh, the cone of S inject to uh, uh, this, what we call abelian of C. So that's this. And this D tilde, so because now it's, this is also abelian group, so, so this D tilde induces uh, a homomorphism of abelian group scheme. And so, because it induces, now, what do I mean? But this is a, a sub-scheme of this abelian group scheme. So, I, now I can ask whether this, uh, this cone is uh, invariant under this. So, if 
C is invariant under this action, then I will say this uh, then we'll call the C uh, uh, E cone. Does that make sense? So this, this cone embedded into an Abelian group scheme and you have a homomorphism up in group scheme, right? So, uh, so that means this C, this E also, e, because it acts, so I mean, by, by this, it acts on, so if a homomorphism groups, that means that you can say that in another words, that the first group acts the second group, right? By this homomorphism, right? So, like first course in algebra, like first chapter in algebra. And then, but this sub scheme might not be invariant under this action. I know this, the whole group of certainly is, but the sub scheme might not be. And if sub scheme is invariant, then I call it e, e con. And so the statement I made, uh, which you, sh you need to check, is that this, the D I just defined is a TY con. So it, it acts on D. The D is an invariant subset of Abelian Hall. And then the quotient actually embed into the, the cone constructed out of Q. So that's what the statement I made. So I should have switched these two boards, uh, but it's too late now. So anyway, so I, what I mean by this is this, this TY cone, and therefore TY X and D, and the quotient, it's uh, uh, the subscheme of this cone. All these, you know, take some time to digest. Unfortunately, there is no very good way of doing this. I will give you uh, a few examples, but that's uh, to digest these. It probably take you some time. Yes. Sorry? Oh, invariant means, well, if you have, if you have a space, you have group action in space, right? So it, it, so it moves one point to another point. Some of, some of the point, so I can take a sub, sub space of this space. Invariant, it means very simple thing. It's uh, like you, so what's a group action in space? It just means you take a, well, it will go to another point. Every point go to another point, right? So if I take, say, uh, this, then the point here will go outside of this po point. It won't be invariant. But if I take, say, an orbit of the action, then it will be invariant because every point will stay, after action, will still stay in the same subset. Well, invariant, as I just said, it's G, so the group, so, okay. If a group acts on, on say, V, okay, and then you can take a sub-scheme of this V, say, Z, and what invariant here means, if you G acts on Z, it's still inside Z. After action, still lie inside Z. G acts on subset, it doesn't have to lie on the subset. It's invariant if it's, it still stays in the same subset. Okay? Okay, so uh, now we have uh, this. You might be thinking, hey, uh, there's so many exercises. Uh, I've, 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 you know, probably put all the difficult stuff into the exercise, which is not completely true. I mean, the exercises are not difficult to work out. 
You just you have to unwrap all the definitions, then you will see the exercise. Uh, well, some part, you know, some math is like this. Some math is once you understand everything critically clear, the statement becomes obvious, right? And some statement won't won't. I mean, y even though you understand everything, it's still a marvel that why this equality will hold. And this is the belong the first type. Once you understand this, every definition and statement correctly, then these exercise or any the fact I quote becomes tautology basically. And so that's why you need to think about these. Uh, okay, so all right. So what's the definition of virtual fundamental class? Now here is. Uh, is that, uh, so I take, uh, I de define D to be the quotient and then this is lies in C of Q and as you know I just, I just said the C of Q Again, lies in uh, E1. <coughs> right? So I've shown all these sequence. The first one is I, I, I say this exercise. And second one is what I, is a tautology. I just explained by construction. So once you have this, and then you define the virtual class to be uh, okay. So this the upper shriek is a refined intersection of that, uh, which I will explain. So you have uh, you have this x, and then you have e one, and of course this is a but this is a zero section, so zero went by zero section. So every vector bundle over x, I do have a tautological zero section, right? So forget about the projection. I'm just taking a zero section. And now I have this d, d ver inside e1. I can take uh, what Fulton called refined intersection of this, and this is what are we okay with refined intersection? Okay, good. So that's the definition of a uh, uh, Virtual fundamental class. Not too long, right? So, yeah. See, we still have time. So, uh, now I will apply this to ground within theory. Sorry. It does not use Q. It, well, yeah. I mean, this Q is sort of a, a Transitional figure. I mean, I can just exercise this Q from, but it's easier to put this Q into exposition, so that I don't have to. You know, I, I will explain. Like, uh, so I was told that I definitely had to explain what this stacky approach is. So I'm going to explain that later. But I noticed I only have 30 minutes, so I will I will speed up a little bit. Anyway, so the the reason was like. Uh, some of you wanted to know what uh, this, uh, and maybe when you read the literature, people use different terminology. So, so I will, I'll explain the terminology. But anyway, so are we good so far? All right. So now I will explain what what we will do in growth within theory. So what does this has to do with growth within theory? Well, in growth within theory, of course, I want to find define virtual class for m bar g n x beta. So x will be n bar g n x beta. So unfortunately, that's, that's a mistake, because I use x here, and I use x there. These two x are not the same.
Yeah, I remember when I was uh, when I was a child, I used to do a program, to like basic programming, and this programming basic you can always uh, let x equal to x plus one. That's you know that's always something you can do always. And so I, so in ground within theory, so the x will be uh, uh, m bar g n. Now I'm I'm going to avoid x here. I will go back to this to be x, but just for today, my smooth projective variety will be v. Okay? Because I already use x for that. I realize this is a mistake, but I've done that. So, okay. So how do I get? Uh, how to get the two turn complex of vector bundles? The first question is, how do I get this? Well, I know, OK, the first question, right? Because I want to construct virtual class for m bar g and v beta. I have to first tell you what e dot is, all right? And how do I construct this e dot? It's quite simple. You just uh, take universal curve. Ah, oh, sorry. Uh, I know. I'm. Uh, my, you know, my board writing might be a little bit schizophrenic because I I tend to like to write x, but I already use x for something else. So uh, let me call this pi. All right. So. Uh, and this e dot. I will not define e dot, but I will define e dot dual. This will be the same as in terms of complex to be, and you have f to v t v. So I pull back this, and this is a certain two term because this is a, a this is a family of curves. So only. Only h zero and h one, no h two, right? That's certain two term, but it's not a complex. It's certain two term complex, but not vector bundles. Two term is okay. Two term complex okay, but vector bundles, no, not yet. I have to make sure I construct a vector bundle here because th these two terms are not two term complex vector bundles. It's two-term complex because of dimensional reason and Gordon-Dick theorem, but it's not a uh, vector bundle. So I, I, and the, to construct a vector bundle, it's fairly straightforward. It's a sort of a, a standard treatment in uh, this uh, actual geometry. All right. So to how to make make sure this is isomorphic to. Uh, to E zero to E one. How do I do this? Well, I will first uh, do the following. So, uh, let's see. I'll first find that L. Be an high ample line bundle, and then you can construct. So then, what we want to do here is to construct uh, so uh, a, a vector bundle sequence of this. So let me call call G this pullback T V, and I want to construct. Uh, a two-turn complex of vector bundles of that. So what I will do here is that uh, for uh, I can so for all n very very large, I have the following thing. So if you do the p 
pi lower star g tends with l n pi upper star this was subject g l n and this is just well it's basically say if I tensor it enough time becomes generated by global sections right so take ample then take a very high power and tensor with any uh, quasi coherent sheaf becomes generated by global sections uh, or coherent sheaf actually so uh, the second thing here is I can also make high high core march vanish we have for n greater equal also not greater n is equal to zero and then r zero of this That is uh, something because uh, I take any pi ample line bundle, then I can do that. So now, I, what I would need to do is to take this. So, uh, so I will take a uh, define f f to be uh, this thing. So, pi upper star, pi lower star of g tensor by l n for any n, then I tensor, after this, I tensor it back. And then, so this certainly by first one, this subjects to uh, g, because I tensor it back, right? So that, that is good. So this is exactly the first part. And now I call the kernel k, because it's a subjection of vector bundle, so this will also be vector bundle. Right? The kernel of subjection vector bundle is a vector bundle. Co-kernel might not. The injection of vector bundle might not be, give you a vector bundle, but certainly subjection give you a vector bundle. Is that okay? So now I can form a long exact sequence of this, and which you will get here is I'm going to write a shorthand. So R0 of K, R0 F, R0. G, then R1, K, R1, F, R1, G. All right, so this guy is trivial on the fiber. Only this happens, so this will be zero by the third. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll put this one, two, three, or something, so I can refer to them. Uh, by the third, I have this equal to zero. So this is uh, by one, right? And because of this zero, this has to be equal to zero as well. And this is exactly what I want, right? Pull back and then push forward. G is G is this. So that is exactly what I want. This part is exactly what I want. And so, but these two, because these two vanishes, so that means these two have to be vector bundles. So I'm done. OK? So I find two-turn complex with vector bundles. Yes. Yeah. F. Pi lower star. No, no. Here. No, no. Here, I want to push forward here. So this is my x. So I construct this out here. So this is, you see, it's pi lower star of g, exactly what I want. Yeah, f upper star. F. Oh, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. Thank you, thank you, yeah, certainly. Otherwise, it won't make sense, right? 
you know, when you read paper, it's a typo. You know, it's there, obviously a typo. It doesn't make sense that way. Then it's easier to guess wh which way it goes. The, the horrendous one is like when, when it could mean 10 different things and you don't know which one to choose. Yeah. But anyway, no excuse for, for any mistakes. <laughs> so that's two ten complex we found. Okay. So how do I, how do I construct this uh, virtual class, which I'm going to be a little sketchy. Uh, so usually what we do here is not to construct, uh, not to construct uh, sort of a, this, what you would call absolute uh, virtual perfect train theory, but to do it fiber over fixed curve. So we'll, do we'll construct a perfect Applian theory fiber-wise with fixed curve, OK? So that, that's how we usually construct a virtual class out of growing theory. So I'll explain this a little bit in growing theory. We'll construct. with fixed curve. Fixed curve means complex structure and everything of the domain curve is fixed. Oh yeah, so I have forgot to say, how do I find this pi ample line bundle? Well, this is easy. So L, I should have said this EG, you can choose L to be a uh, uh, relative dual line sheaf of your CX twisted by your curve and tensor with F pullback of M pole line bundle. What do I? Maybe give it a little bit power. So like third power is certainly is enough. Maybe M pole is good enough. Yeah, I think M pole is good. But anyway, so something like this. Well, if the map is trivial, this part will be ample. Okay? And if the map is not trivial, this part will give you ample. And it's fiber-wise. So this guy will be a pi ample line bundle. Does that make sense? So that, that is that's the way, one way to find pi ample. I mean, certainly, the map is subjective, so you, you can always find the red pi ample line bundle. So OK, so uh, you, that's usually what I do here is to find, and how do I do that? Well, I want to fix curve, but I don't want to. So the one guess would be to take this x n bar g n v beta, map that to n bar g n. But this is bad, because I change the curve. When I do this, I might have to contract unstable components, right? That's the only bad thing. So Instead of doing this, well, I mean, here is you have to use some kind of stackiness, but very mildly, that I change this to a sort of artin stack of pre-stable curves. So. What does that mean? That means I don't do any stabilization. I just take the domain curve and map to the, what the class of domain curve is. And if I do this fiber-wise, that means I, I definitely fix the curve, because I, I do nothing with my domain curve, right? So I fix my domain curve. That's what I mean. I do this fiber-wise. So now you can also have this class over here and map to x, oh, sorry, v. And so I'm doing this fiber-wise. So I fix, say, tau here. And here, everything will be over tau. But this is OK. Why? Uh, but this give also the desired 
uh, virtual fundamental class why well you think about this then you'll be very clear because well I, I oh, okay so maybe you do think a little bit harder than I suggested that this guy is actually smooth well in the first week you learn the deformation theory of pre-stable curve is is unobstructed right any nodal curve it doesn't have you don't need stability condition deformation of nodal curve is unobstructed you can for you have a node can always de deform the node right and you, you actually you know what the deformation is locally does that make sense and for a modular problem deformation space is gives you the smoothness of this deformation theory be, uh, being unobstructed means the modular stack itself is smooth the same way you prove m bar gn for stable curves is a smooth stack okay Does that make sense all right so i have to use so since it's smooth uh so you don't you actually you, you don't need obstruction so uh you can go from the, this sort of relative perfect obstruction theory to so absolute perfect obstruction theory by the by a simple uh, manipulation so you have this uh, e tau here map into l tau dot so l tau dot what I tau, tau I mean I fix my domain curve and then so here fiber wise I have well this guy I have L and the fiber wise I also have L tau okay does that make sense it's just true term truncation of embedding to a, a global smooth stack so this is what we constructed by using this now you can you can globalize this uh, saying look certainly I have this uh, and LX where X is this this is so this is I like build on X tau and this is just entire X and certainly this uh, by sort of a, a this kind of MGN and then tau and this is uh, some kind of distinguished triangle which I will not explain well I will not explain this too much of distinguished triangle but anyway so this guy you can have uh, then you can extend this to this so in ground within theory as I said usually what you constructed oops, oh there is a cord usually what you constructed is here but it doesn't really matter but you know if you want to construct your obstruction this guy has no obstruction so it e is the same as l and so this is what you want this is what you constructed fiber wise sort of family wise and this is what you want and you can easily shift to what you want by just this simple extension and because everything was done in sort of a derived category there's a sort of distinguished triangle of derived category etc etc so which I will not get into I, I already made this assumption that I'm not going to use derived category and here I just tell you you can extend this because easily because this M MGN is smooth no obstruction okay okay so far so that's 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 uh, uh, Abstracting theory we have. Uh, let me. There are two other things I might not be able to finish. Uh, so, uh, one thing is I was told I have to explain what the intrinsic normal cone is, and even though I don't understand them, I will try to explain it anyway. Because. Uh, So just to well, the good thing is that once you know this, you uh, you can shift between the terminologies 
Uh, this is just basically this graver ponder ponder ex exposition is sort of a more down to earth exposition of what you will find in uh, Baron Fantecki. And so, okay, so this here is a comment on Baron Kai, Kai and Barbara's uh, original exposition. And that was sort of a, a so this is equivalent to above, of course. So here is uh, from this e dot, right? And you form a dual. Again, the e lower dot, which will be e zero to e one. And again, so I can form this stack quotient of group schemes, all right? So you can form this called E, E1 quotient by E0. This is, this is really a stack quotient. Like right here, it's a quotient, right? It's a fiber-wise abelian group quotient by an abelian group. Okay, so the second part here is uh, from this. I know this <coughs> excuse me, that you have this uh, action of Ty on a normal cone, and then so this again, same C as that C, is CXY quotient by to X. That is what they call intrinsic normal cone. And I have to choose, look, uh, I choose uh, in, in right. Why is something I arbitrary? I have arbitrary chosen. The eventual result I constructed should be completely independent of y. Many manifold, but instead I do an embedding. And then that. Everything I can same here. So what I they so that contains no of choice independent choice of embedding. Uh, I If I don't have a global embedding, I take X, find a chart. For each chart, I can group these uh, quotient. It's completely independent of the choice of this. And because I global embedding X to Y, but locally I can So that's why it's called intrinsic normal cone. The third part here is that uh, very similar to what we, we this two Embedding. Pointed out that I did no Q here in this. And the Q is there. 